Hi everyone, it's Henry here, and in this video I'm going to take you through how I'd approach painting an Eldar army from the craft world Eandon. I'm going to use as inspiration this fantastic piece of artwork of one of the Wraith Seers, I think, and a Wraith Guard unit. I absolutely love the battered, faded, just grungy look that's going on with them. So let's paint. Over a black primer, I'm going to base coat the model brown. Now I've used Games Workshop Thondia Brown, um, it's kind of a burnt umber colour really, um, but I really enjoy using this paint at the moment. Uh, I'm firing it through my airbrush about 25 psi, uh, it's a 0.4mm needle and nozzle airbrush, in this case it's the Cult of Paint Evolution by Harder and Steenbeck. Now I've just blue tacked the head in as well, um, but I may as well base coat it all together at this stage. So once you've got a couple of layers on there, nice smooth brown base coat, we're going to apply our pre-shade. And for this, I'm going to use Tamiya Flat White XF2. Now it's important when we use Tamiya paints that we use Tamiya thinners with them, in this case X20A. I've thinned the paint about four drops of thinner, or five drops of thinner to one drop of paint. So it's very dilute, but it's still very usable, very controllable. It's one of the reasons we really like using Tamiya for this job. And I'm going for a simple pre-shade. So whereas traditionally we might leave it black through gray through white, we're just going brown through light brown through to white. And I could do quite a dramatic pre-shade in the sense that I will make sure we've got really, really bright areas uh, of white. And then in the shadows, we do still leave a little bit uh, of that brown showing through. And the reason we've done brown underneath is if we do black underneath yellow, it really washes it out and you get this horrible sort of greeny, yellowy, murky color. At least with the brown, albeit quite cold with this brown, it'll give us a bit nicer color in the shadows. So you can see there, the model's sort of lighter towards the top and lighter towards the side as you look at it. So as we look at him from the front, uh, she's lighter from the left, and we look at it from the back, she's lighter from the left again. And that was just determined by the pose. Now I played around with a few different yellow recipes for this, and this is the one I settled on in the end that gave me what I found the most satisfying finish. So I'm taking a Monument or Pro Acryl, uh, this is golden yellow, and I'm spraying this mainly just over the highlights and the mid-tone area, so I'm not really worrying about the shadows. Now I've thinned this paint one-to-one -one with normal airbrush thinner, so whatever it is you normally use, it will be absolutely fine with this for your acrylic water-based paints. You see it's quite a, a light yellow, and where it's gone over the shadows in the brown, even though it's not got over there too thickly, you can already see what would have happened if we just left those black. And once it's dry, I wanted to tint the yellow slightly, change it slightly, particularly in the mid-tone and in the shadow. And this is where I went to the aptly named Yandan Yellow Contrast Paint by Gaines Workshop. Uh, originally I tried this just straight over the pre-shade. I just didn't like it as much, it was too warm, it was too rich um, for that artwork to be the, the inspiration for it. So with this, as I said, whereas with the previous yellow we aimed at the highlight and the mid-tone, in this area we're aiming at the mid-tone and the shadow areas. And when I say mid-tone, I mean that area between where the white began to bleed into the brown on the pre-shade. And as always, contrast paint will dry a lot more powerful than it goes on, so give it a few minutes uh, once you think you've got enough on there. And then just to further enhance the shadows, I'm going to take Seraphim Sepia, which is a wash by Games Workshop, just going to pop that straight in the airbrush and specifically aim this into the shadows. Now, not only is this going to give the shadows a little bit more colour, but it also means I can bring back any shadows and any uh, definition to do with the rendering of the shapes that I perhaps messed up with the previous steps. So if I felt like a light was going too far around a limb, I could bring it back with a little bit of this shade colour. Now for the helmet, I'm choosing to use Liquid Mask, uh, in this case Humbral. I use this brand because that's what the old boys that do all the um, like model railway stuff use and, you know, they know their stuff when it comes to this kind of thing. And I just want to apply it in the center of the faceplate. And this is going to be the easiest material to use for this. Um, I ended up choosing to use a cocktail stick rather than brush it on because I wanted it to be as precise as possible. And this stuff dries on your brushes very quickly, even synthetic ones. Um, so in the end, I would just put a drop on the end of the cocktail stick, touch it to the model, and you can see it sort of wicks off it. And then you can just gently guide it towards those edges of that recessed area.
And as long as our paint is dry underneath this, so I left the yellow for, I don't know, 10 minutes, I went and had a cup of tea. I came back and applied this over it. We don't need to do any varnishing, we don't need to do any protecting or anything like that. But nice and simple. And it's much easier to do it this way than paint in the yellow with a brush afterwards, just because yellow's notoriously tricky to get a nice smooth base coat when we're using a brush. And if we were doing this across a squad, or in my case, if I was doing it, I'd try and do the majority of the Guardians in one go for my army. It's actually not going to take too long at all. Now, once the masking fluid dries, it goes see-through. So now we know that we're ready to safely remove it. Or spray over the top of it. So I'm just loading up a black here. Uh, I think this is Game Air Black by Vallejo. Doesn't matter whatever black you use in your airbrush, it's fine. But we're just going to do another pre-shade. So remembering where my light source was from and which way the head was pointing, I grab my Tamiya White again. And this time I really do do a dramatic pre-shade. Um, by which I mean there's very little mid-tone. We're sort of just going white and then almost straight into that black. The reason I'm doing this is one, I think it looks cool. Um, particularly, you know, on the focal points of the model. Uh, but secondly, we're using blue, which is an incredibly powerful colour. Um, so it'll still colour the shadows anyway, even straight over black. And ideally with army painting, I want to keep it as fewer colours as possible. And we've already used a few for the yellow, so let's keep the blue nice and simple and just use the one. And this is Deep Sky by Vallejo, uh, their model air range. Absolutely love this colour, and I think it's a really good match uh, for the artwork that I see uh, of the Andan for the blue in that. Now again, once that's dry, go and have another brew, go and do something else. I'm going to aim for the eye lenses because I know that if I go through and scratch the paint, that doesn't matter because I'm going to be painting them differently later anyway. And as soon as I've just nicked a little bit of it off, I use a little bit of blue tack, then I can safely peel off the rest of it without damaging any paintwork under it. But you can see it's masked off that area really clean and nicely. And if there is the odd little ridge that we need to paint in, it's very easy to go in with our brush, with the blue, and paint over it. So I'm going to give the whole model, including the helmet, which is on another cork, just a light gloss coat. You can use whatever gloss varnish you like to use. In this case, I'm using polyurethane, but it really doesn't matter. It's not a heavy gloss coat. We're not trying to make it look like a boiled sweet and, and get it paint running everywhere and protecting and all the rest of it. It's just to remove the surface tension a little bit. Now I'm going to get a nice cold brown color. In this case, I've chosen Shadow Brown by Abtalung 502. It's a quick drying oil paint. They're useful for modelling, but it really doesn't matter. You can use your artist's oil colours, whatever you want. And then I'm going to thin it down to a wash consistency. Uh, in my case, I'm using uh, Odorless Mineral Spirits, Sansador uh, by Windsor & Newton. And we just mix that in thoroughly until we've got a nice wash consistency and adjust you know, to your taste of how you like to wash. Now, when I apply it initially, I'm a little tentative. I'll just pop it in the recesses, see what it does, see how strong it is. And once I'm happy with that, I'm gently going to wash the whole model. But generally, at the end of each pass with my brush, I will try and end in a shadow so we deposit the paint into the shadows rather than leaving them at random splodges all over the model. And I'm just going to work my way around the whole model. So I'll go over the blue, I'll go over the black of the gun, because you'll notice I've also painted that in. And that's because we're going to use this brown oil to shade the black uh, weapon. If you're enjoying this tutorial and you'd like slightly more in-depth tutorials to see perhaps how we'd approach other bits of the army or our own personal projects for display, competition and so forth, then consider checking out our Patreon. A massive thanks to all of you that do support us on there. It allows us to produce videos for YouTube and Patreon every week and we're loving it. Now once that's dried, I left it for about an hour, then I popped the hairdryer on it for a minute or two. And because it's quick drying oil, it's good to go from that point. Now I'm going to unify the finish over the model with a couple of coats of Ammo by MIG uh, Ultra Matte Varnish. But you go for whatever finish you like on your model, but I thought an Ultra Matte would fit quite nicely for this scheme. Now it's time to do a little bit of detailing and battle damage to the armour. So I'm going to combine edge highlighting with battle damage. All I've done is taken my yellow, added a little bit of white to make it, as you can see, considerably lighter. And I'm just going to work my way around the majority of the edges on the model, just tapping my brush against them. So I'm not trying to do a solid edge highlight. I'm actually wanting it to look like little chips of paint uh, along the edges. 
if at some point you muck up, and let's be honest, if you're painting an army, you probably will at some point, because you're going to have, I imagine, at least 20 or 30 of these, uh, these guardians in it. Don't stress about it, because we're going to use another chipping colour in a minute, and we can just turn that mistake into a larger piece of battle damage. So it's, even though it might look like quite a, a fiddly little step, it's actually very relaxing, and there isn't much pressure on it. And now we go in with a brown, and I'm just using the Thondia brown again, just say to keep the colours down that we're using. And I'm going to go over, I don't know, maybe just slightly more than 50% of, uh, of the areas that I've already chipped with the lighter colour. And this is just to represent uh, a bit more corrosion. Uh, and again, we saw it on that artwork, that lovely brown chipping. I did exactly the same on the blue. I just added a little white into the blue and I've chipped it like that. And then I did the same on the black, adding a little bit of white into the black and tip tapping along the edges, following it by the brown. Now for the gems and the eye lenses on the model, I did red. I've just filmed uh, red gems for the Althway Guardian. So I'm going to use that clip here instead. Um, there's really no need for me to, to film it twice. Um, all we want to do is take a nice strong red. So I took GW Mephiston red as my base. Uh, and I'm going to paint sort of a semi, uh, a sort of half moon, a crescent shape of that onto the gem. Then I'm going to follow that up with a lighter colour. So Fire Dragon Bright was my orange. Then I add Blood Angels red contrast over the top of that just to add a bit of richness uh, back to the scheme. Then once that's dry, I'm going to put a little reflection dot in using a white. And this white dot's going to go in the crescent that you left black. So you didn't, didn't paint the red over. So a little dot of that to make it look a bit reflective. Then I like to often go back in and reapply that orange for that secondary sort of reflection on the edge. And then personally, I enjoy putting some gloss varnish over my gems. Uh, I think it looks nice on the table. And for the eye lens, whilst I'm painting this one blue in the demo, it's exactly the same process, but we just used the red paints that we used before. So we're looking to cover the entire of the eye lens in the red. Then the eye lens shape is sort of vaguely triangular. So we just sort of follow the outline of that with our orange, in this case, the light blue. And then we do a little white dot up in the upper corner, just like we did on the gem to represent that reflection. And I think the nice thing about having fairly simple schemes to do the rest of the model with means we can take that bit of extra time to do things like the eye lenses uh, and the gems, just to add a little bit of character to the model. And that's the Guardian done. There really was no more to it. Uh, I've done our simple usual basing scheme. I'll put a link up the top uh, for the process I use for that. And I'll list the pigments that I use down in the description, along with all the colors I've used uh, for painting the model. And as per usual, don't stress if you haven't necessarily got these exact paints, you've probably got something very close. Um, but if you do want to go out and buy specific to try and follow this recipe, then I'll list them down below for you. I'm really enjoying painting the different craft world schemes uh, and it's been fantastic uh, seeing your reaction uh, to how we would approach army painting them in our own style. I really think this would look fantastic across an army, especially with a load of Wraith units mixed in there as well, where you could up the level of battle damage even further. So if you do try it out, make sure to tag us in the results because I'd love to see it. Thanks ever so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, hit the like button if you haven't already subscribed because it really helps us out. And I'll see you next time.